George, age 92, and Edith, age 89, are excited to be married. They go for a stroll to discuss the wedding, and on the way, they pass a drugstore. George suggests they go, go in, and he addresses the man behind the counter. Are you the owner, George asked. The pharmacist replies, yes, I'm the owner of this fine establishment. George goes, we're about to get married. Do you have heart medication? Uh, of course we do. How about support hose for circulation? Uh, yeah, we got those too. What about medicine for rheumatism, osteoporosis, and arthritis? Uh, yeah, we've got all that medicine too. Uh, what about waterproof furniture and depends? Do you have those? <laughs> yes, sir. What about hearing aids, denture supplies, sleeping pills, Geritol, Ensure? Do you have all those things? Absolutely. What about wheelchairs, walkers, canes? Uh, yeah, we have all of those in all shapes and sizes. I'm a little more uh, questioning, why, why are you asking me all these questions? George smiles and replies to the pharmacist, we're getting married and we'd like to use your store for our bridal registry. Awesome. But um, So we are in the series, This Is Who We Are. And so it's good for us to, as a church to kind of step back, I believe, and just kind of remind ourselves of who we are, who we are as Connect Church. So week one, let's see if we guys can re remember, week one was what? We are family. family. Russ knows, all right. <laughs> if I had any kind of singing voice, I'd sing some, you know, YMCA song, We Are Family. Uh, week two was we are getting to know Jesus. Very good, very good, good. Uh, week three, we talked about we are on a rescue mission. Um, week four, we listen to God speak, right? We always, God's always speaking. Uh, week five, we make the Bible understandable. All right, right. Do you remember Juan Cotos come up and he read the Bible in Spanish to us? And we were all like, what is he saying? We don't know. Talked about how to make it understandable. This week, I get to speak on generosity. And then next week, um, Cheryl Taylor, um, she will be here, and she's going to speak about we empower men and women, not just men, we empower men and women as leaders here at Connect. So that's what we're going on. So our aim today, right, our big aim, our main aim is that we are to trust God, that he will give us plenty so that we can always be generous. Let me repeat that for you. Our aim is to trust God. We are, to trust God will give us plenty so that we can always be generous. That's what we're going after. Yeah, there's notes right there. My daughter doesn't even get my notes. Jeez. All right. Um, oh, it's for mom. Oh, yeah. She immediately deflects. It's for mom. All right. Generosity. I see some eyes rolling. Like, oh, Jason, uh, he's going to teach on giving and tithing, and he wants my money. Now I'm a little nervous. He already asked for money once this morning. You know, we tithe, and now we took an uh, offering for Emma. Oh, man. Um, I want to clear things up. How many know that generosity is just not giving money. Mm -hmm. Generosity is my Uncle Tim and Aunt Susan traveling all the way from Ohio to hear me speak. No, I'm kidding. They just called me last night like, hey, we're in Cody, Wyoming and staying in Bozeman tonight. Can we come together? So, yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> side note, right? Uh, this is my Uncle Tim. Um, he's from a small little town in southern Ohio where I grew up. He's also a pastor. He loves Jesus. He was an inspiration to me when I first became a pastor. He was pastoring a church, and he invited me to come and speak. Because of him. Thank you for pouring into me as a young pastor. Great church. You guys know I'm emotional when I preach. 
Generosity is more than tithing. It's more than giving away your money. It's giving of your time. It's being there to listen. It's being available when people need you. It's sharing of your talents. It's showing compassion. It's all of these things. It's just not giving. So don't tune me out when I talk about generosity. Am I going to talk about money? Of course. That's just a small little part of being generous. So if you have your Bibles, or if you have a phone, um, you can grab it. And we are going to be in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 9 is where we're going to be today. Key part is you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. You will be enriched in every way so you can always be generous. So we'll start with verse 6. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will receive a generous crop. 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 You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly in response to pressure. Not pressure. God loves a person who gives cheerfully, and God will always and God will generously provide you all in need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. And the scriptures say they shared freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides the seed for the farmer and then the bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then will produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So that's our aim for this week here at Connect. To trust God will give us plenty so that we can always, always, always be generous. Now, it's an aim, right? It doesn't mean that we have arrived. It's our aim. It's our goal. It's who we are aspiring to be. We are aspiring to be a generous church. You know, I watched the Olympics this week, and I watched some gymnastics. We watched some swimming. I watched some archery, um, and everybody's seen this guy, right? The guy doing this. Right, the guy from Turkey, right? It's like become an internet sensation, the meme, right? But do you think those athletes just woke up one morning and said, I'm going to be a world-class athlete? I don't think so. I believe they practiced and they practiced and they practiced and they trained until eventually they got to the point where they became an Olympian. That was their aim. That was their goal. And I was also personally inspired by the Olympics this week. I saw Simone Biles dominate. They've got gymnastic moves named after her. Uh, Scotty Sheffer, he won the gold in golf. I saw Katie Ledecky take home her ninth gold in four Olympics. That's like 16 years of being an Olympian. Like that inspired me. And it made me realize that, hey, I can probably unpack my suitcase after a business trip in a day instead of a week, right? Living out of that, <laughs> that suitcase, right? So I have been inspired becoming an unpacking Olympian. And Kim says, amen. Yeah. So we all got inspiration. So all these messages about this is who we are are meant to convey the ideas that we embody, we don't embody these values perfectly. Rather, we aspire to be, right? We're always going after God. We're always trying to improve. We're always trying to reach people. We're always trying to love on people. We're always trying to be generous. That's who we are. We still have a ways to go, right? But God's calling Connect to be, in this week, generous. So if you've got your notes, I've got a couple of points for us. Point number one, 
Generosity is realizing that God owns everything. Generosity is understanding God owns everything. I have come to realize everything I have, material things, my family, my home, everything, absolutely everything is a gift from God to me. And man, I don't deserve it. None of us deserve it. However, he is so generous. He is so generous to us. And if we want to see how generous he is, let's, let's talk about the parable, parable of the talents. And I'm going to summarize this instead of reading everything out of Matthew 25. But it's the parable of the talents. The master and, the, and, and he's got three servants, if you know how the story goes. The master, he's going on a, a long trip. And he decides that uh, as he leaves, he brings uh, three of his servants together and he says, hey, I'm going to entrust you with some of my talents. So he gives the first one, he gives five. The second one, he gives three, I'm sorry, two, five, two, and then the third servant, he gives one. So he calls them, I'm going on a trip. Here's some talents for you. I'll be back, and let's see what you can do with them. The Greek word for talent is the same word we derive in English for talent. Yeah, pretty simple, right? All right. That word, the talent, means your gifts, your skills, your abilities. But it was also in the Greek, uh, during that time in in Egypt, it was actually uh, a form of money. So, a talent... Is it gifts, abilities, time, resources, or money? Yes. Which one is it? Yes. Man, you guys are amazing. Yes to all. Your talent is everything that encompasses you. So, the master, he gives the talents to his servants. But here's the key. He gave them each according to their ability. Did you notice he didn't give them all the same talents? It's all the same amount? He said he gave them according to his ability. You see, he's given each and every one of us an ability. Right? It's like this. I have, or you, you have a talent. Right? For instance, um, let's say doing work around the church. I don't have talents to fix garage doors. But I know somebody who does. We each have talents. And he uses it according to our ability. Now, a lot of us want, um, we all live in this valley, we know how it's expensive, we'd all like to have a little more. However, if you're unwise with money, do you think he's going to give you a whole lot of money to be unwise with? See, he's giving it according to our ability. So what we see, so he gives them according to their ability, and when he returns, the ones with the five talents and the two talents, what do they do? Multiplied it. Very good. They doubled it. They doubled it. And what did the master say? Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. Enter into the joy of your master. He was proud of his servants. But then we had one who only had one talent. And what did he do? Do you remember the story? He buried it, right? He buried it. He did nothing with the talent that he was given. He just shoved it in a hole, covered it with dirt, 
And when the master came home, the five doubled it, the two doubled it, the one did nothing. You wicked and lazy servant. Depart from me. You wicked and lazy servant. You see, stewardship with that master, uh, stewardship mattered to the master. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> stewardship <coughs> mattered to the master. And in the same way, your stewardship, it matters <coughs> to God. Once we realize that God owns everything and that we are steward, <coughs> stewards of that, then I believe that open-handedness becomes second nature. When you have and then you give and you have talents and you use those talents, it becomes easier to give. Now, sometimes it's tough, right? It's tough to give. It's tough to sacrifice, right? I ain't going to lie. I've been materialistic in my life. I used to ride motorcycles. But now I got kids. But, you know, I couldn't just ride a Honda. I had to ride a Harley. I was materialistic. I tried keeping up with the Joneses. That didn't work for me. What I have realized is that being generous changes the way that I think. Being generous changes the way that I think. That's why Kim and I, from, we weren't great at the beginning, and we've had troubles in the middle, but we tithe. We give the first 10%. Tithing more than about giving away money, right? So this year, Kim and I, uh, for the first time ever, we planted a garden. Planted a garden. And so we'll just see what happens. I mean, we planted like potatoes and corn and everything. So anyway, this <laughs> was our first zucchini out of the Bennett Garden of 2020, 24, 2024. 2024. Look at this beauty. Gorgeous, isn't it? So, the Lord tells me to give my first fruits. So, who wants a zucchini? All right, Marianne, I saw your hand go up first. Will you take that back to Marianne? There she is. See her right there? All right. I love zucchini bread. I'm just saying, you know. We were talking last night that, uh, yeah, my Aunt Susan was talking about the zucchini bread with pecans and all this stuff, and so I'm like, yeah, we're going to get that recipe. All right. So we like being, we like being generous, right? And here's what I, this is, this is Jason speaking. This is me. Here's what I have realized in my life by giving of my tithe, my first 10%. It is, it, it provides for connect, right? The things that we give we invest in. It provides for connect. It helps keep the light on. It helps pay salaries. It helps minister to our kids. It helps the youth. It helps missionaries. So I know that it provides for connect. I know that when I tithe, it tells God that I trust him with everything that I have. It is not always easy to write that and to give and to go online, all right? It's not always easy because I got bills and I'm like, mm, what about maybe I should? Nope. Yeah. So it tells God that I trust him with everything. It reminds me that I am not my source, that he is my source, right? It reminds me that he is my source. It transforms my money into a seed. When I give, when I invest, he multiplies it for this house. It breaks greed and self-reliance off my heart because it reali I realize, man, Lord, you have given me plenty, and so I, in turn, want to be generous. And this is just me. Again, this is my life. When I give, it seems that I have more than enough. If I'm stingy, I'm like, where did my money go? So 
it breaks that greed and that self-reliance off my heart. It lets everything in my life know that God is first. It tells everything around me. He is my provider and he is first. I have realized in our lives, Kim and I, that when we are generous, God is generous to us. And it's just not monetary, okay? Again, we gotta separate the money and, and the, the, the other things, right? But I just know that when I am generous, the Lord is generous with me. Corey Tenboom says this. Everybody knew who Corey Tenboom was? We've talked about her a few times. I see some heads shaking. Yeah. Um, if I remember right, she was Dutch, right? And then she helped uh, uh, Jews escape. Yeah, she hid them, her and her sister. Uh, but she said this I have held many things in my hands and I lost them all. But whenever I have placed, whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all, but whatever I have placed in God's hands, I still possess. <clears throat> so if we look at the biblical principle, right, of giving and being generous, um, not only that, um, there's actually scientific studies that I found this week when I was researching. There is physical evidence that supports the benefit of a generous life. Okay, you just don't have to take the Bible's word for it. You can, if you're in academia, you can take this research. And men, I want you to listen to this. Scientific research provides compelling data to support the evidence that giving is a powerful pathway to personal growth and lasting happiness. Giving. Through MRI technology, or fMRI, we now know that giving activates the same parts of the brain that are stimulated by food and sex. I'm just saying, guys. <laughs> Experience show that uh, altruism is hardwired in the brain, and it is pleasurable. Giving is pleasurable. Helping others may just be the secret to living a life that is not only happier, but also health healthier, wealthier, more productive, and meaningful. Giving activates things in the brain that allows us and makes us feel happier, healthier, all those things. So, challenge one is, if you haven't been giving, try it. Happy, happier, healthier, wealthier. If you haven't tried it, started, just try it. If maybe you've been giving in the past and you haven't been, no time like the present to start over, right? Now, I'm not begging for your money, and I'm not one of those name it and claim it. I've said that before. Like, oh, Jason, if I give $100, would God give me $1,000? Hmm, probably not. But I'm just saying, and Malachi, he tells me, he says, test me on this, right? Test me with your tithe. So. Everybody okay? Yeah. All right. So I'm done talking about money. All right. So. But try it. You'll like it. Mikey likes it. Mikey likes it. That's all. Now I'm dating myself there. All right. Whew. Mikey was a cereal back in the day when I was, yeah. Life. Life cereal. Mikey likes it. He wouldn't eat anything, but he liked the life cereal. So, all right. All right. So we've talked about money. All right. So now, point number two. As we transition, point number two. Uh, generosity is investing. Generosity is investing. God thinks in multiplication. We already said that. He thinks about multiplying. Five, uh, I'm going to mix this up. Five, seven, five loaves and two fish? Fed 5,000 people. He thinks in multiplication. That's what he does. Connect, we are trying to think in multiplication as well. So... Um, we, as Connect, we also invest the tithes and offerings that come into us. We invest. We invest in God, expanding to God's kingdom. And in case you didn't know, 
uh, let me tell you what we do. Um, we are generous, our church. Um, we're helping Aslan, my daughter, get to YWAM. We're helping Ryan in the back there get to YWAM. Um, Michael Bent, um, he's in YWAM, we give to him. We give to Anna Rosdeck, she is in Africa. Uh, we give benevolence offerings. Uh, we give to family camp, so you all can come and hang out and smell each other for three days, okay? We give to Chi Alpha, the uh, university mission that uh, Timbo runs, so we give to Chi Alpha. We give to families in need. We give to Kelsey Slingsby. We give to the Conez Ministries, right? We all love the Conezes, right? We give to Mexico missions trips. We give to missionaries Jay and Taylor Shaler. Ta <laughs> Jay and Cheryl Taylor, who you'll see next week. <laughs> Well, we give to Love, Inc., we give to Speed the Light, we give to WorldCast Ministries, we give to Zoe Care, we pay down our principal, we give to Youth Camp Scholarships, we've given to Ukraine Relief. I don't know if you ever give in the app, that tithe, it's now like, uh, you know, all the different places you can give, it's almost like the Wheel of Fortune, you got to spin the wheel, right? You got to <laughs> spin it before you can figure out who you give to. <clears throat> You know, like when you're old, like me, like, and, you know, somebody says, what's your birth date? And you got to spin to 74, you know, you're like, spin, spin, spin. All right. So, hey, we are a generous church. Um, to date, it's a little over just this year, 2024, um, about $40,000 has went out into all these different ministries. So, pat yourself on the back. You guys are absolutely amazing. So, we are generous. We go to YWAM. So, can Aslan and Ryan come up here? I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> We're generous with time, so we get all <laughs> She's like, I am. All right. Okay. So, um, October 2nd, both of these young ladies are taking off um, to YWAM. Yes, yes. And they are going to suffer for Jesus in Hawaii. I know. It's hot. It's hot. It's humid. I got to fly six hours to get there. Oh. oh. Yeah, but um, three months in Hawaii, and then three months, we don't know where. Outreach. Wherever we go, wherever the Lord sends us. So, um, YWAM, Youth with a Mission, um, equips young people uh, for the works of ministry. So, now I've got some questions that you can answer to our lovely audience. Yay. All right, so we'll start with you, Ryan. Okay. What inspired you? What's your reason behind wanting to go to YWAM? So uh, God has been speaking to me to do missions for a long time, uh, many a year. And, um, and I never felt that like going to Mexico or things like that was quite where I fit. And so then I learned about YWAM from Nikki. And um, I was hearing her stories about YWAM and everything. And it just felt like that's the type of experience I needed to have and the training that I felt I would need. And uh, especially since I want to go into media and uh, be online, I feel I need to be know what the verbiage is, <laughs> so to speak. And um, so I felt that having this extra training and this experience will help benefit me to know where God wants me to go. Awesome. Okay, I'll just go to question two for the sake of time. All right, so um, when you go to YWAM, like, what are you hoping uh, to get out of it? How, is it? how are you hoping it impacts your faith and what do you think God has called you to do? Um, I know God has called me to worship, and I'm not exactly sure completely what that entails. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to YWAM to figure out. They have a wor wonderful worship track, which I'm going to try and get into um, because I love music in general. And so in YWAM um, at Kona, my hope is to um, figure out 
different ways to worship because worship isn't just singing songs. It's not Christian karaoke. It's other things. <laughs> um, That's a good one. Christian so, karaoke. Yeah. 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 So I'm just ready to go and learn and just absorb everything I can because I don't know what I want to do when I get back, but I know that's a place where I can full, wholeheartedly focus on God and for, focus on worshiping to see what he has next for me. All right. Very, that's a great answer. Thank you. Yeah, she also told me one time, she was like, uh, yeah, um, you know, maybe after this, you know, you know, maybe I plan a church or something because, I mean, you did it, so how hard could it be, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Kind of. Piece of cake. Yeah. I'm really 25. That's just, yeah, just, okay. Sure. Yeah, that's what planting churches do. See ya. Okay. Um, and so, uh, for both of you, what, what are you most excited about? What are you most excited about going to YWAM? <laughs> uh, on a, some of it is meeting people and finding the community of YWAM. I've heard so much that it's very tight-knit and uh, very foundational in that respect. And um, I'm also super excited to um, basically in general just grow in my relationship with Jesus and figure out what that looks like between us. Like I've always had, you know, my since I was a kid kind of relationship, but mm. being in the missionary track, I feel it's a little bit different. And I'm excited to see what that'll look like for me and, um, and where that will take me. <laughs> so. yep. Most excited about I just said the learning bit. I'm just excited to learn everything that I can. Because mm -hmm. um, it's all going to affect me, like, in a way. So it's like, I don't know, just learning in general. Learning, okay. learning everything. Growing in my relationship. Learning how to grow in my relationship. Yeah. That's, yeah. Learning how to grow, yeah. right? Right. That's awesome. All right. So I'll take this back. Um, and if you would step down here, please. We are going to have... Okay. We are going to have we're going to have a YWAM alumni pray for them. Look at her. So, um, if you would like to to, to pray with Nikki uh, for these two beautiful future missionaries, then come on down and join. Yeah, come on down. Send them out. Um, as people are coming down, I or coming up or whatever direction this is. Um, <laughs> I, uh, um, after Jason asked me if I could pray this morning, I was just asking the Lord what he wanted to speak, and this verse, um, verses came to my mind um, just for the two of you, so I just wanted to speak this over you. Um, but how can people call on him for help if they have not yet believed, and how can they believe in the one that they have not heard of, and how can they hear the message of life if there is no one there to proclaim it? And how can the message be proclaimed if messengers have yet to be sent? That's why the scriptures say, how welcome is the arrival of those proclaiming the joyful news of peace and of good things to come. Oh, yes. And so I just, I felt as the Lord was speaking that over me. This is not a small thing that the two of you are stepping out to do. This is not something that everyone feels called to do or has the courage to do. And so I just want to affirm and speak over you that both of you are so courageous and brave to be stepping out of completely out of your comfort zones, out of everything that you've ever known for the mission and the sake of the gospel. And, and I believe that God is going to bring revelation and a depth of relationship between you and him that you've never known and experienced before. But the point and the purpose of all of this is because of the mission of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And you simply saying yes is already preparing the field and the harvest of those who you are going to meet. So I just want to pray over both of you um, that even from now, even from your yes from before, and now you are saying we are going and we are not stopping and nothing is going to stand in our way, that those that God has already prepared to hear the good news and to experience him, like he's already prepared those people and those divine appointments. So... So Jesus, we just thank you for the goodness of who you are. And um, both Ryan and Aslan have just 
been through a, a process of you just calling and, and refining them and speaking to them and um, just compelling them to say yes to the mission of your gospel. And we just thank you for their courage. We thank you for your, their braveness, and we thank you for their yes, Lord. And we know, God, that when we just say yes, Lord, that you bless it, that you go before us and behind us and to each side of us, Lord. And so we thank you, God, for your protection over them as they go um, to Kona and as they go to the edges of the earth, Lord. Um, I pray for deep friendships for both of them, Lord, and the community of YWAM. Um, I pray that these would be lifelong friendships that they would form. I pray, Lord, for a depth of relationship with you that they never even knew was possible. God, I pray for your father heart to just seep into every part of their lives, that they would experience a love and a goodness and a favor um, that they just, yeah, never even knew was possible. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak dreams and visions to them um, about all that you have called them to, Lord. God, I, we know that um, they, they have dreams and they have goals and visions, but sometimes, Lord, you just completely blow them up because you have something so much bigger. So I just pray for an open-mindedness for both of them, Lord, that they would just be ready to be molded and, and handcrafted into exactly who you have called them to be. Um, and I pray, Lord, that there will be tough times and there will be processes and um, kind of going through the fire that they will have to go through. But I pray that they would cling to you, Lord, in those moments. And God, they would find a, a peace and a comfort that they've never known from you. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are already preparing the hearts of those who they will meet on outreach. I thank you that you are already preparing the land. And so we just declare salvation, Lord. We declare divine appointments, Lord. We declare um, people experiencing and encountering the real and the true living God through their lives, Lord. And wherever you call them to, Lord, um, we just we thank you that you have gone before them, Lord. And, and I just pray for an excitement, a fire that cannot be put out, that just continues to be stoked for the mission of the gospel. Lord, I pray that they would catch your heart, Lord, for the people of this world. Um, and we have a saying in YWAM that we often say that we are ruined for the ordinary. And so I just pray over both of them, Lord, that they would be ruined for the ordinary, Lord. And they would only strive for the extraordinary goodness and um, greatness of, of who you are, Lord. And so uh, we just bless them. We send them out. We commission them as their church family, Lord. And we just can't wait to see all the things that you're going to do um, in and through them. And Lord, if you are calling them to long-term missions and they don't actually end up coming back, I pray that they would be <laughs> open to that. And we just thank you for that. And who knows? I don't know. I have a feeling. So anyway, in Jesus' name. <laughs> uh, thank you. YWAM ain't cheap. So in that little giving box, there's a little box for Ryan and for Aslan if you want to support your Connect missionaries. Yeah. Um, back to generosity. Uh, you congregation, you are so generous with, with your money. You're also generous with your time inside and outside this church. Here's what I've experienced in my life uh, out of Connect, your, your time and your energy. Um, you help people move. I'm a recipient of that. When we moved about three months ago, all of a sudden, like the millennials and the Birkin Pass and the, I mean, just like trailers and trucks and everything, right? Showed up to help us help us move. That's experience. That's generosity of time, right? Who 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 here loves uh, uh, helping people move? Yeah. Okay. One person, Lucas. Yeah. So just so you know, if you guys move, somebody loves to help, and he's got a truck and a trailer. And he's got muscles, so okay. So you help people uh, move. I see you guys uh, cleaning up, uh, connect cleanup, right? How many people showed up? It was like this place was spotless, and, and you cleaned, and we did, did uh, we just all kinds of stuff. So you guys are awesome when you do that. You help Emily clean every week. I see people volunteering with kids. I see you leading small groups. Uh, the worship and the media team is here practicing, and they're here early before all you all show up. Uh, security, I see Jay walking around all the time, keeping us safe. Um, what else do we do? Uh, donuts, who here loves donuts? You think those donuts just show up 
No. Barb goes every Sunday morning or Saturday night. She gets them. She brings them here. She prepares them, right? So we love donuts. I see people greeting, right? Smiley, friendly face when you walk in, right? Chris, everybody loves Chris, right? So we greet. Uh, We also volunteer at the Christmas parade, right? I see you guys do that, giving out free hot chocolate. All these things you guys do. Last week, we heard about Juan Carlos uh, talking about Hector. Everybody remember that? Yep. Uh, Kim was telling me that, uh, that uh, they are becoming pretty, pretty close. Like Hector's truck had some issues, and he went to go get it fixed, and it was going to be like $1,000. And then he found it online, and Juan Carlos says, hey, why don't you let me help you change your shocks on your truck? So now he'll probably be over at the Kona's ranch. And then um, if that ever happens, then Hector's done, right? I mean, <laughs> Art and Brenda and, and Dan and Becca and all of them, Juan Carlos, get a hold of him. Hey, yeah, he's coming to Jesus soon. So, And then last week, right? And last week, I was talking about Hector. Like four or five people came up to me and were like, hey, how can we help Hector? Where's he at? What's he doing? Right? You guys are extremely generous with your time, with your effort, with all of that, right? Because we realize it's all about Jesus and we want to, yes, my, there you are. I didn't even see you. He said he gave his life to Jesus. That's what it's about. Thank you for being available. Juan Carlos, it's all about Jesus. Good job, babe. Wow. That's hard to follow up. Where was I at? Uh, you know what? We're just going to... I found another study about that says that the more, more time you give, um, the more time you feel like you have. They did a bunch of studies, and the people who were like felt overwhelmed, they didn't, they didn't do anything, and they just felt overwhelmed with time. But people who actually went out and volunteered and helped, they actually felt like they had more time all the time. So anyway, that's another study. Why are we so generous as connectors? We realize our generosity will impact eternity. Right there. It just impacted Hector's eternity. Yeah. Right? That's, a, that's why you're generous. By being generous with our time, we become part of someone's eternal story. Man, this is just perfect, Juan Carlos. Our generosity, it, it, Lou Giglio, and if you ever heard of him, passion, trans, passion Ministry. Anyway, he said, our generosity writes us into the story of God. We just wrote Hector into the story of God. Apostle Paul told me this in Acts 20, and I have been given... I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of Lord Jesus. It's more blessed to give than receive. It's more blessed to give than receive. It's more blessed to give than receive. Last point, point number three. Generosity starts with a decision. Generosity starts with a decision. I believe generosity is the pathway of who you want to become. Who do you want to become? Do you want to become generous? Then start acting generous even when you don't feel like it. Being generous can be tough. Being generous is making the decision to give to the church before you get that next raise. I'll start giving when I get a little more money. It's deciding to serve the church even in the middle of camping, hunting, skiing, vacation season. It's making that choice. Now, I'm not, no condemnation. I love to camp, but but it's making that decision when you're here to help serve. It's a decision to go to a small group you join even when you're tired from working all day. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I don't want to have to come home eat. Now I got to go to a small group and they live all the way down in Gallatin Gateway and I live in Spring Hill. So it's, you know, yeah, it's making that decision. It's a decision to work through an issue with your spouse so you don't go to bed angry. Right, Russ? Yeah, that is a tough one. Yeah, I want my sleep, 
but I'm also, you know, we get a little tiff, but we got to figure that out. It's all about you and you alone making the decision to be generous. Decisions are hard. Okay, um, for you married folk, um, or you, okay, let's, let's talk to the husbands, husbands, or boyfriends, fiancés, whatever you are. How many times have you asked your lovely spouse, hey, babe, where do you want to go to eat? <laughs> and what do they say? I don't, I don't care. You choose. <laughs> Decisions are hard. Right? Yeah, decisions are hard. Uh, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 9 7, <clears throat> verse 7. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Again, we're not talking just about money, we're talking about everything, right? Time, energy, talents, money. You got to decide in your heart how to give. And don't give reluctantly in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. All right? You decide in your heart. The Greek word for heart is cardia. That sound familiar? Yeah. Cardiovascular, maybe? Okay. You guys are awesome. All right. So if we look at the Greek definition when I was studying, it's the Greek says uh, organ that is a center of the circulation of the body. It's the center and seat of spiritual life. And it is, is the soul or mind, it is the foundation and the seat of thoughts, passions, desires, appetites, affections, purposes, and endeavors. So if we kind of go back to seven, you must each decide in your heart it's about what God wants you to do. But it starts with you, right? It's you making that decision. You should be making that decision with your heart, with how am I going to invest? How am I going to um, give? How am I going to spend my time? All of those things. We'll be giving our talents from the center and the seat of our spiritual life. It's not about giving to receive. As I, I had said, it's about giving to bless others. And receiving is just a byproduct of your generosity. Right? So it's about giving out of your heart. There's this idea that what you love, you will give your talents to, right? Musicians love playing music. That's what they give their talents to. But did you know that if you maybe try something different, um, maybe like, I don't know, help with the kids some Sunday, you may actually grow to love that. see some eyes looking away, like, oh, you want me to help with the kids? John's like, yeah, we could use all the help we get. Okay, so anyway, try it. You might be like Mikey and like it, all right? There's all kinds of ways to serve. I just told you, we got security, we got greeters, we got ushers, we got musicians, we got help in the back. You could help with donuts. I mean, all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of opportunities for you to serve, all right? So, it's just not one more thing that God wants you to do. It's just, it's we do it out of our generous heart. Yeah, we just talked about that. Who you invest in, you will, you will grow to love. Um, right? So it's also making that decision. It's being disciplined. Anybody here go to the gym? A few people? Yeah. Did you love it when you started? No. No. Tosh, very, no, I hated it, right? But you went every day. Love it, now. love it now. See, you might just grow to love some things you didn't think you'd be very good at, right? Like, for instance, Russ and Weight Watchers, right? Did you love it when you started? No. No, <laughs> no but he's healthier now, right? Happier. The man loves veggies, Right? He was telling me that when we were out to eat the other night. He's like, man, I just no more sweets. I just want, want veggies, right? It can change, right? I still like sweets. I, he still likes sweets. <laughs> he still likes his sweets. He just has moderation and control over them. He learned something new. 
right? He invested in his, in his health journey. All right. <clears throat> Giving of your talents. Talents, remember, is everything. When you give of that, that's a spiritual discipline. But spiritual disciplines are not religious obligations, okay? It's a discipline in you. It's not a religious obligation. They're just not one more thing God wants you to do. What he's doing is actually inviting you into be transformed. He wants you to be transformed through your generosity, and it's an invitation to intimacy with God the Father. It's an invitation to become his hands and his feet. It's an invitation through your generosity. And guess what? He's not looking for super Christians to do this. He's not looking for super talented. He's looking for ordinary people who will trust him to do something extraordinary through you. He's looking for us all to do something extraordinary. He wants to transform you. He wants to, man, he wants to just invest. He wants to pour. See, he's already made a decision. Like we had, I talked about we had to make a decision. He's already made a decision. You will advance my kingdom. You will do the works of ministry. You will do greater things than I did. He is already transforming us. He's already made that decision. I will die for you. I will give up everything. I will give up heaven. I will come down here. I will live for 33 years on this earth. I will die the most horrible death known to man. All because of you. I have decided that. So who wants to be transformed? Mm -hmm. All right. I see hands. I see nods. Okay.